Uh, hi, this is Joey again with another review. But instead of doing a review on movies, or mo a particular movie review, we're going to be discussing um, a television show. I we have the D DVD of. Now, fortunately, there's only one season that came out of this you know, series, as far as I know. Most likely, the other seasons haven't been come out yet. And then, of course, the first season of one of my favorite television shows from the, from the 1970s. That's Welcome Back Hot. And I think you know the reason why is because two in 2000, I think 2012, two of the stores, on Palermo, on Play Horseshack, and Robert Hendricks will be Epstein, uh, died within about six months of each other. Uh, and because their families made a statement just for royalties for the, for the DVD. But this is the first, the first season that came out in 2007, and it's now so almost seven full years later, this is the only season that ever came out on DVD, which is a real shame. And this, of course, is the, the DVDs. It only came out only 22 episodes. Only 22 sh uh, shows of this series. And it came out on DVD. Here's the DVD of the listing. And if you go on back in the front, it has all the listings of the episodes to tell you which ones which ones they are. And but like I said this is right. Uh, of all the shows uh, this one this one's my favorite one of my favorite ones. And other than Happy Days, this is the only time in the series that I have the whole uh, a, a DVD of of one of one particular season. But like I said welcome back kind of for those of you who don't know the show or are familiar with it, this is the show that me John Travolta's career. Uh, because he was like a 22 year old guy who got hired to play Vinnie Barbarino and of course the leader of the school called the Sweat Hawks. The Sweat Hawks is like a group of remedial students at that time they were called remedial students but really they were special ed, a special ed class and Gabe Kaplan, Gabriel Kaplan who was the co-creator of this series along with Alan Sachs Play, play the teacher then Kyle and it was the original title of the show was called Kyle but the by John Sebastian who wrote and sang the theme song it was called Welcome Back of course everybody remembers the song Welcome Back but uh, they told him John the show was called Kyle so what they did was they took the title of the song Welcome Back and they added Kyle to it and that's how they came the, uh, the title of Welcome Back Kyle and of course, the other main character is Marshall Spassman, who played Kyle's wife Julie. And of course, the, the trademark of this of the show is that uh, that Gabriel Captain was a comedian who was at the time in the seven, in the early seventies was was a fresh hot new comedian, and he used to do a lot of impressions like George Burns and Groucho Marx. And of course, the trademark of, of Welcome Back Kyla is that in the beginning and the end of every episode, Kyla would tell an uncle joke to his wife Julie. Sometimes it would be an aunt joke, uh, but but he would tell all these kinds of jokes, and you you would get the uh, punchline just before he even says it today. But by that time, it was great joke. I used to tell those jokes to my classmates in school because I used to watch the show religiously every every week. And then when the show got into syndication, I used to watch the show every day. I used to tell my teachers these jokes. There was one particular teacher I had in junior high school, which was like years after the show and uh, Michael McCarr was still in the ones on regular television at the time and he used to tell all the jokes every day. A different uncle joke. But he, ne he never smiled. All the other kids got the joke and they laughed, but, but, not, but not him. Uh, but as the show itself, I thought it was a great. It, it was many people would say it's not the greatest show of all time, but I feel it's, one, it's definitely one of my my top ten favorite favorite comedies. Seinfeld is like maybe if I had to rank this the favorite comedies, Seinfeld would probably be like down to like two hundred. Because I hate that show. I've been doing a review on Seinfeld some other time. But in terms of Michael McConnell, it was like a, a, a very safe 1970s uh, show. 
and but but like I said, it's one of my favorite shows, and it has uh, one of my favorite episodes on this uh, series, and, and it's called uh, uh, the long. It was titled "The Longest Weekend," and the and the premise of that particular episode was that Julie decides to go. Let me get the the title of the bike. It's called. Yeah, now I can't find it now. It's called the longest. Yeah, it's called the longest weekend, which is an episode where Julie goes out with a neighbor of us to to a ski weekend, and Kyle's by herself the whole weekend. Um, which is like a typical typical episode for for Kyle in that time. But uh, it has my favorite uncle joke in it. The joke is, oh, didn't tell you about my Anesta. Remember last week to my to Aunt Esther. I said, "Oh, what happened?" Or well, my Aunt Esther was sitting in the living room of her house, and her doorbell rings. She answers the door, and it happens to be a nice young man at the door saying, "I have a telegram for you." And my Aunt Esther says, "Oh, you know what I always wanted my whole life a singing telegram. Can you do that to me?" My, my aunt, and the messenger says, "Well, I'm sorry, lady, this is not a singing telegram." My Aunt Esther says, "Please, I'm an old woman, and never." I think it's telling them before. Then I said, okay, lady, if you want your car. So you open it up, says, that da 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 Your sister was is dead. You see, she died in bed. It was really weak, but she was 88. And your sister Rose is dead. And I was, I was, when I first heard that joke, I was wrong. I was wrong with that joke because it, because it was funny. And you could tell by the time when I was. I mean, you, I mean, you can tell it's going to be like a death joke, but, 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 but it was hilarious. But for those other episodes, like with the thing with the flu, and you can tell how great these guys could play that time. We had a great camera with the four guys. But unfortunately, uh, like I said earlier, uh, one thing on a horse shack and one and one Epstein who was probably a Puerto Rican Jew. And of course, his tagline was, he was, you know, in the high school yearbook, he, he was more, most likely to take a life. And of course, each one of the four guys, uh, of course, then he joined the World Bank Vinnie Barbarino, who used to do the Vinnie Barbarino song. he go, ba 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 Barbarino. It was his, his bit, one of his bits. Uh, and the other bit he used to do was every time a car would ask him a question, on the vice principal, Mr. Woman, who also passed right back in the 80s. Uh, every time he asked him a question, he'd go, what? Where? When? You know, do those questions. Uh, and Horshack will introduce himself with his nasally voice, more nasally than, than my voices. he go, hello. I'm on ya. I'm on your Horshack. Yeah, you know, I didn't lose that impression either. Um, of course, an FC would do the bit with the notes, kind of these forming excuses. One of the better ones we used to do a rhyming poem. Like, roses, uh, violets are blue, roses are red, I'm sorry to announce my grandmother's death. You know, he will do a joke like that, or roses are red, violets are blue, or some two days, I was sick two days with the Asian flu. You know, he would do notes like that, that was his, that was his bit. And of course, then Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, who played uh, Freddie Boomer Washington, and there's this guy down, down here. And then he will say, Hi there. And of course, the reason why he came up with the hi there, uh, because everybody came, had their own uh, shtick or, or car. And of course, Freddie didn't have anything, he didn't have, he didn't have a shtick. So he came up with or, or a catchphrase. So he just came up on the spot. He, he, he said when they were showing the pilot, he just came up on the spot and said hi there, and they got a big laugh. And of course, they kept it in. They kept that into the show. Uh, but as, and of course, Marshall Strassman was, was on there, and I think who didn't have a crush on, on Mrs. Carter? I mean, you had to be blind not to have not, not to have a crush on. Uh, you had to be blind and gay. Right, not to have a crush on Marshall Strassman in that, in that show. 
Well, like I said, I think the show itself that's like about four years, and John Travolta, I think he was on the show for like the first two years, fully the first two years, and I think by towards the end of the second season, he decided he became such a big hit on college that he decided to make movies. He made two movies like back to back. One in the nineties, it came out in seventy seven, which some of you might have heard of, called Saturday Night Fever, and then of course the next movie he made was Grease. So for the last I think that's a year and a half or two years of the show. He was only one part time because he was off making his movies, and they had to write him his character out somehow. And so they made the thing that he dropped out. And rather than giving it away, he dropped out of Buchanan High School, which is of course the fictional high school in Brooklyn, New York. But when you watch the, when you watch the show, or at least the credits. Of course, they say, like I said, I was from Brooklyn. And my grandmother used to live in Brooklyn for, for practically most of her life, at least in her elder part of her life. And when she goes, when I go by, when I used to go and, and visit her, uh, by every month or every couple, every few weeks, I, I would visit her and ride on the, what was then, the B train. You know, in New York City, you, but the B train does not go there, go down on that route anymore. It changed about ten years ago. It changed the route of all the subway lines. So, so the B train does not go down there anymore. That was the D, the D train. But on the credits, it was the B train that you see going by. And the high school that you see in the credits was New Richard. I know I'm always mispronouncing it. Uh, New Richard High School. In Brooklyn, New York, that's the school that you see in the opening credits. And I was sit on the side of the train where I could see the school going by. And and I say, Hey, that's a college school. And my father would correct me and say, No, that's that's uh New Richard High School. I said, I don't care what you say there, that's a school school that television show. And and my father says, Yeah, you right, it's true because that's the that's the school that you see in the credits. And of course, at the end of the opening class, when you see underneath the, the subway tracks, that was 86th Street in Brooklyn, in Ransomhurst, New York. That's where you see is underneath the tracks of, of what was then the B train. Like I said, that was, that was the D. So if you ever want to see the school that you see in the opening class, when you walk in my car, you have to take the D train to Brooklyn. And you see it. So when it gets on the other way, that's where you, that's where you see it. It looks like it was filmed on the on the subway. When it was going by by on the train, because that's how that's why it's bad. When you get that high of a look, and you see the notice how old the show is. You see the train with the graffiti on it. Um, so that's my review of Michael McCall, the, you know, the first season. And you said I'm not gonna give away any particular episodes except for the one I mentioned already. But but if you want want to see like a good comedy. Uh, comedy that's not really all that offensive. I like the sh comedies of today. Uh, please check out the check out uh, my card in the season one. And like I said, I don't know why there aren't any other seasons of the show on television. Uh, not on television, me uh, on DVD. I don't even know if my card is even shown on television anywhere. So any of you, at least here in the United States, anyway, who's watching this video. Please comment below and let me know if the show is on cable someplace. Uh, thank you for watching the watching the video. Please like it. Please comment on it. And please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.